Welcome to Talk Tennis. <laughs> I am joined today by Brittany, Tiffany, and Troy. Yay. Yeah. And we are going to give you guys a sneak peek into Q1 of 2022. It's here. We're all just saying how like, it's so crazy that it's end of the year. And I also said that I have no idea what time of the year it is, honestly. So 2022, it's very exciting. Do you guys, should we start with like what our favorite product of 2021 has been? Maybe that could be fun. One thing, one thing only. It can be anything. Oh, I know. I always seem to put the pressure on last minute. I should have given you a heads up. Brittany, you always got good idea. No, <laughs> Tiffany, you always. Favorite product of 2021. <laughs> ah! Troy. Okay, but, I'll start. Wow. <laughs> um, I'm going to go with my favorite product of 2021. Okay, it's, I said only one, but it's a tie. The RF Unique Low Hats and the HUD Prestige Tour. Next. <laughs> Wait, boom is boom number three? Oh no. Well, boom is technically 2022. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Boom. <laughs> All right. Well, last time I said the ultra shot three was my favorite. Then is what we're talking about. I know. Okay. I know. It's it could like, be anything. It could be those wine openers that we just got in stock. <laughs> those are pretty cool. Those are really cool. But I'm gonna a case with ultra shot three with the favorite play test of I'm still wearing those shoes. So that's a good answer. I know. I feel like I'm putting pressure on you guys to come up with something epic. <laughs> I, know, I know. I have right? been nothing epic. <laughs> I'm trying to think of like also all of the epic things that came out in 2021. Actually, what what's new on the site? What's something new that's like now become a staple in your life? It could be apparel, socks, shoes, yeah. string. I mean, it's not my it's not mind blowing, but that new head over grip is pretty good. Okay. Prime That's... Tour, or Prime Prime Pro, Prime Tour, <laughs> Prime Tour. I think I'll double check. <laughs> um, what's the biggest difference between that and Wilson Pro? Um, it feels pretty close. So, like, my thing is like we always revert to Wilson Pro or Super Grab. Those are like the goat overgrips. If you like, like a white semi tacky overgrip, and everybody, every brand comes out with another wannabe white overgrip and they're just like not very good they're like not stretchy they're too slippery and this actually is like a legit competitor it's the first like white overgrip i've tried in like a decade that like actually can be in the same room as pro overgrip and <laughs> super crap. nice i think it's just i think it's like pro overgrip maybe just a little thicker oh i was gonna say the opposite but that's what i that's what the head guy told me that it was supposed to be a little thicker, but maybe, maybe it doesn't feel that way. I don't know. But I mean, it's, it's nothing like game changing. It's just a, a good competitor. This isn't a new product, but we did bring it back for winter and I use it every day. It's my hydro flask. Yes. <laughs> I love With it. my teed up sticker on it. Hey, there you go. I feel like I need more stickers, but. Are those back on the site? Yes. Oh, should be. Yeah. Okay. Cause we had them at BNP, but I wasn't sure if we were like selling them, selling them. Yes, we brought them back for winter or for, for the holiday season for great gifts. But really, I seriously use this every day. We have it in a pint glass. Um, and I use the pint glass. And <laughs> I feel like I need to get the wine glass. I'm sure there's a wine glass. Right. And yeah. now I'm thinking like, oh, we also added gutters to the website. There you so go. The, now we're starting to think the gutter sunglasses. I love those because they're like, $35 is the most expensive one. And they're super fun just depending on like styling and colors and all that. And they're made for athletes. So I think we all have a pair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I like that. It's, I don't, it's the, the price means I, I drop them, which I'm famous for dropping my sunglasses <laughs> constantly hitting the ground that, you know, I don't freak out too much. <laughs> exactly. And then were the V-Core rackets technically a 21 release? They were. Okay. So yeah, that would probably be like a, you know, besides an overgrip, I would say uh, the V-Core line was a good update. But like for me, the 95 and the 98 plus, those are like two really great updates, I think. I thought Britt would give a shout out to the Yonix Poly to a Rev in purple. <laughs> I do love purple too. Because I feel like that's, yeah. That's very me. We spend a lot of time together. <laughs> we know each other very well. Uh, okay. 
Well, that was our little warm up. <laughs> I don't know if we passed that, but we're warm now. Let's talk about what we can talk about <laughs> for some launches in 2022, or maybe there might be one that sneaks in before 2022 starts. Britt, I'm going to have you lead us through rackets first. Definitely. So if you follow the tennis racket industry, there's two big launches every year. There's January and for the start of the year and around uh, U.S. Open time, August time, that tends to be a second big launch. And then there's a couple, you know, spread out in between. But we always get excited for new launches or for a new year, which means all the new rackets we get to try out. And we've been already heavily testing almost every single launch for quarter one. So the first one that's coming out, we've been testing and it's, I guess I'm starting with a bang because it's <laughs> currently, I've been using the Ezo line since eight years ago, nine years ago. And I know Troy's been a big fan, but the Ezones are coming out with a new racket, a uh, new racket line. They're coming out with all the rackets. Uh, 98, 100 are first. And we are super excited. I am, at least. <laughs> uh, I haven't been a fan. I'm going to start. because Yeah, I was going to say, first impressions, maybe. Yeah. So to be honest, I wasn't the biggest fan of the last cosmetic. And I know cosmetics not the biggest deal. But uh, this new cosmetic for me is my favorite of the Ezo line, for sure. Uh, from the last, since I started with the AI, but I did hit with the, um, the XI too, but the AI for me was my, my favorite of the Ezo line. And then this one cosmetically is my favorite so far, as far as hitting with the first impressions, it is definitely an Ezo 100. <laughs> <laughs> I could easily switch to it right now without any issues. Um, as it seems to be my trend, I never quite switch right away. I always I'm seeing if there's something else out there and there never is. So I always <laughs> stay with it. For me, I think the biggest difference is I think it's a, I know Izo or Izo, Yonix is trying to go towards that DR feel. And I think they've definitely made steps in the right direction. I definitely feel it isn't as stiff as the previous version. Is it quite DR? I don't think so. I think it's getting there. Um, but then again, you're like, I think you mentioned that, you know, I have a vision in my head of what the DR felt like and <laughs> does it actually feel like that in real life now? Maybe, maybe not, but I do really like the E-Zone 100. It is with another racket coming out. I'm debating between which one I switch to. So mm. I was going to say, is, are you making the switch early this time? <laughs> not officially. Um, I'm going back and forth between this one and another one we'll be talking about. Nice. I don't want to give it away yet. Okay. Yes, that romanticized DR feel. <laughs> Tiffany, what's your first impression so far? I really like it. it um, I feel like I have, it, it, I don't know um, why, but I feel like right away, I, I always settle into one Yonex 100 square inch brackets pretty quickly. Um, but this one was just, I'm really finding my groove with it really well. I'm hitting great angles. I feel like I have the right amount of control. So, because some of the time, some of the previous ones, I I like the 100, but I actually like the 98 for just that a uh, little bit more control, mm -hmm. and I also like the um, 305 gram uh, weight. But this one, I just feel so comfortable with right off the bat. It's been a good start of the uh, 2022 play test season <laughs> with me for me with the Ezone 100. Nice, Troy. What do you think? Have you hit that much? Uh, I tried the 98 and. Uh... Like Britt said, it, you know, it definitely felt like an E-Zone, you know, for me, definitely really light and fast. So I'm kind of like looking forward to maybe hopefully later releases of the line if they do decide to bring out a heavier version of the 98 and maybe a longer one. Um, but as far as the feel goes, feels good. Um, yeah, I think it's a little bit, you know, feeling a little bit more plush. I personally, with the E-Zone rackets, I know like everybody's like, oh, does it have the DR feel <laughs> or is it like softer? And it's like, for me, it's like, how soft do you want an E-Zone to be? Because like <laughs> if the racket, if the E-Zone gets so soft, why wouldn't you just play with the V-Core Pro? You know, that's my concept. So it's like, I actually like the firmer, crisper feeling racket sometimes, especially like in the E-Zone line. I, I actually was a fan of the 2018, which everybody like kind of 
frowned upon. So I don't know. I think it feels good. I just uh, looking forward to trying the the heavy, maybe a heavier version or a longer one if they decide to release it. I'm going to echo what Britt said. It feels like an E-Zone to me. <laughs> and I don't know if it's because it like just feels reminiscent of like several of the E-Zones of the past, but I'm that it's easy. Definitely. You pick it up and hit with it. And you're like, yep, that's what that, and it feels great. It feels fun. And, um, one thing that I noted last week is I feel like I can like hold the ball on my string bed a little bit longer. So I feel like I'm able to kind of like disguise my shots a little bit more. I don't know if it's like that perfect blend of maneuverability and like plush, um, like dwell, sweet dwell time. Dwell time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But like, not like clash. Not like a phantom 55 flex, like some, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Like yeah. I still feel connected to the ball, but yeah, it feels nice. So, and the cosmetic, I also think the cosmetics are really great. I like it better than previous ones as well. Oh yeah. It looks great. I don't, I don't know if, uh, Yonix tried or had brought this up before in their marketing, but one of their like recent videos they posted, they call it the easy one. <laughs> the the it, easy it, line. Yeah, like they're refer they're referring it to, to it as the easy one, like easy one because they're using the letters. Uh -huh. And then, like when we pick it up and like use the rackets, it's just such an easy transition. It's like it's Mind the easy blown. one. I like yeah. that. So I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah, makes uh, sense. This is cool. So when the this podcast launched, the easons will be available for pre sale on our site. We'll have our video reviews up, and they'll, they should be in stock or uh, mid January around. So. And then like Troy mentioned, you know, people always ask when's the extended versions or the heavier versions. We haven't heard anything yet from Yonix. It tends to be a little bit later in the year around second quarter. So hang tight till we know. We'll, we'll let you know when we do. But as for right now, just the core models, I guess. Nice. So that's exciting. Something to look forward to for sure. There are a lot of things to look forward to. What else can we talk about? All right. Well, this one I feel like I'm like, how do I lead up to these? Okay, so this one has had a lot of hype. Um, it is currently for pre-sale on our site. It is the Head Boom. Uh, we all hit with the blacked out cosmetic of it. We got, we actually filmed our reviews. We did a global of the mid plus, or sorry, the MP, which is not mid plus. It's main, main performance. performance. <laughs> yeah. Still getting used to that. Um, and then the pro as well. We we did a review. so. These are kind of, they've had a lot of hype and they're, in, you know, they're continuing. So that actually officially launches in 2022. So that's why we're talking about it now. <laughs> yeah, it feels like it's been out, but unfortunately for, well, by the time this goes out, maybe it will be available, but I know there are a few people out there. Well, there's more than a few. There's a lot of people out there that got to test it at BMP and they're just like jonesing, like, where's the racket? When can I get the racket? When can I get the racket? So this is exciting for a lot of people that, and right now we even have it available for demo, a free demo actually. So that's an insane deal. Um, so I know you guys might already be hooked on this racket. This is kind of a similar play test for me to, you know, it is like one of those easier fun. I like to use the word fun rackets to hit with and also kind of good dwell time, good pocketing felt well connected to the ball. Um, but like kind of did a little bit of everything pretty well. I liked it. No complaints. Tiffany, what about you? What'd you think? I was on the MP and it is, it's one of those rackets that's just easy to pick up. I want to say it's super comfortable. And I know that I think it's a mid sixties, maybe like a 66 flex rating. And to me, it felt like it delivers the amount of power that I would get from something like that, maybe even easier, but, um, felt more comfortable has that softer pressure feel than I would typically see at that, um, stiffness rating. And it was super spin friendly. I'm a flat ball hitter. So getting used to the launch angle took a little bit, but it is very top spin friendly. Right. What was your experience with that? Yeah, I was also on MP with Tiff and uh, we, we had very similar comments on this. I know we chatted about it a lot in the office. Uh, it's just, it's like you said, it's a fun racket to use. It's probably not a racket I would go to play a tournament in. And my one reason, which I know Tiff kind of agreed with me was I had just a little bit of issues feeling where the ball was landing on the string bed. Whatever it did, I was having trouble gauging my depth. And so sometimes it was landing deep, sometimes it was landing short. 
most of the time is landing in, so I can't fault it. <laughs> but I just was having trouble gauging where my ball was landing. And for me, I really, I mean, that's an important thing. So um, I do know we did test it with uh, Lynx Touch, which is also coming out. And when we had a different string, I think, did we do Lynx Tour? At one Lynx point? Tour, yeah. That helped yeah. a little bit. Um, I, for me, I feel like I needed just a little bit of a stiffer string to kind of feel where it was, but mm. overall it was, like you said, it was fun. Like it kind of reminded me of the Wilson clash mm-hmm. if I had to do a comparable racket. So, and Troy, it's a little out of your wheelhouse, but have you had much time hitting with the, I would assume pro and have you had a chance to like maybe customize or throw a leather grip on it or play around with the specs at all? Haven't uh, haven't tried tweaking the specs or anything on it uh, as of yet, but um, I did like the feel of the Boom Pro. It's a nice feeling racket. Um, I would say, you know, maybe if anything, kind of what Britt was talking about and some of the other testers about like having like to gauge the the depth and like kind of a little bit of uh, uh, unpredictability. Maybe it has to do with just kind of the way the top of the racket kind of opens up and is kind of wide spaced. You know, the sweet spot. It felt kind of lively up towards the top, and then like you know more traditional middle it felt a little deader so kind of maybe that's in my head what was going on like as far as like the depth perception but uh, I did like the feel of the pro yeah it did feel more comfortable kind of had that plush feel that you would get some from a racket more like in the kind of lower 60 range so good feel to it but for everybody's talking for for it being like a fun racket I think in order for us to you know for me to take it like as a serious candidate of a racket I'd have to customize it and kind of go from there which surprisingly, I thought the pro kind of played lighter than what the specs showed. I kind of thought like it played, I think we have the swing weight on it at 323 or so, which is not too low. And I think it's what 116. So yeah. yeah, it would be fun to see add add at least a half ounce on there and beef up that swing weight and see what it would be, um, what it would be like. But We've been testing a bunch of new rackets, so I don't think a lot of us have had a chance to kind of like mess around with any fun customizi- customization. <laughs> wow, that word came out really weird at first. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and those rackets are in stock on January 20th. So okay, a little bit of time. <laughs> um, and also sneaking in on there, which not much really to talk about is a lot of people have asked, is the boom replacing the instinct? And it is not. There will actually be an instinct line also launching around January 20th, I believe. But it's more of, I don't even know, like they're not updating it in any way. It's just kind of going to be like a a line they have. I want to say it's similar to like what Wilson did with the burn line. You know, it's like still, it's not their highest or like their most up-to-date technology, but it's still a good racket and it'll be at at a good price. Good value. Good value there. We go. <laughs> and cosmetically, I think it looks better than previous versions, or at least Great. the most recent one. So for all, for all you Maria fans out there, you know, you can keep what about the, the Heritage in the bag. fans. Come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everybody, everybody remembers it for Maria. <laughs> all right. Next, Dunlop. So Dunlop has a new line coming out called the SX, which S stands for spin. And it's uh, we've had our playtest samples now for definitely a couple of weeks at least. And yeah. I know we've, we've got to hit with them a couple times down on the court. Uh, we will be doing a review on the 300 and 300 tour. They will have a staggered launch date. So the 300 and I believe the LS launch first in January. And then the tour with a couple of the, the rest of the line will launch in February. So a little bit weird, but, but the SX 300 should be here for, I believe, like Australian open time. Nice. Um, let's get into it a little bit because I know we've all hit them. I wish we need to do a better job of like telling people about Dunlop rackets because they make really good rackets. And these ones are yellow. And as Britt said, S stands for spin. So you can imagine what racket they might be playing similar to. <laughs> I think that the feel of the Dunlop rackets is kind of something unique or sets them apart. I really like that feel, that um, technology that, what is it called? The, in the Sonicore. Sonicore, yes. Yeah. Um, it might be like a little more of a muted feel, but it's it's definitely not uncomfortable or stiff. 
And I've been hitting with the 300 tour a lot. I really like it. It's fun. It's fast. Um, I hit a heavy ball with it. I, so far so good. Yeah. Same The I need to do, uh, definitely some more point play. I've been doing mostly like just drilling and rallying with the 300, but yeah, I really liked the previous SX as well. So yeah, these are good rackets. Um, especially if you're looking for power and spin, Troy, I know you probably gravitate more towards the CX line, but what do you think of these SX? Yeah. So I've had a chance to try the tour version of the mm-hmm. 300. Um, I was a big fan of the previous one. And I know um, when we tested those, a couple of the ones we hit had like really high swing weights. Mm-hmm. So it made them feel like extremely <laughs> solid. So, so far um, I do like that, um, just the feel of the racket and maybe that high swing weight. I was liking on the previous version, just really, really solid and like kind of firm, but also comfortable and plush. This one, um, I like the tour update now with a slightly smaller head size. It's a 98 instead of a hundred. So it gives you that like a little bit more precise feel. And I've always typically played with something more towards like a 98. Um, but feel wise, it does feel a little faster and whippier than the previous one. So but that one might take a little uh, doctoring or customization, but I do like uh, the the updated head size on the tour, giving a little bit more precision. Nice. Britt, what about you? Yeah, the 300 is right in my in my <laughs> spec range. So it is an easy racket for me to pick up and use. And yeah, the Dunlop feel, I feel like I've grown to like it more. And more. I don't know. I've grown to like it more and more in my years play testing here. And it's one of those rackets. It has, you know, easy to swing, easy power, and definitely a lot of spin. Uh, I'm not the most spinniest. <laughs> I hit a pretty flat ball, but I do use spin for a couple different things. My One of my favorite things to do is hit these like low angled shots and I use them whether they're a passing shot or I use them to hit an approach shot to kind of pull the, my opponent off the court or mix up my my depth. So this one, I could definitely utilize it. And I had a really fun time, like kind of almost doing it more than I, I should because I I, I could. Um, so it is, yeah, it's it really is a great racket. If I had to pick, I would I lean towards more the um, the FX line, the, the power line, um, kind of more of a pure drive spec and more what I lean towards in a racket. So, yeah, that short cross court angle shots really a uh, pain in the butt when playing dingles. I was just <laughs> thinking about dingles. <laughs> yeah. I love it. <laughs> Br- Brittany likes to put you up against the wall with that shot. So right. Watch out. <laughs> Um, anyone listening that's never tried these rackets from Dunlop and like is using a pure arrow, please demo them and check them out. Maybe consider, you know, if you're looking for an update, because we need to get more people trying these rackets again. Like they make really good rackets. They're something unique, something a little different. As Troy mentioned, that 98 is a little different. So, yeah. And like the quality and the feel of the frame is just, it's really a, a unique thing with that that sonic core. It's almost like a a foam filled kind of kind of racket because it's they put that stuff like in the inside of the tubes of the hoop. So mm-hmm. on that and also you know I noticed that with some of like the technofibers like the TF40, it has that kind of technology to it. So it's unique. Oh, speaking of, well, that's a perfect segue. <laughs> I was like, oh, Troy, <laughs> he <laughs> set you up. <laughs> oh, that's technofibers, me setting. Yeah. <laughs> So the next one we were, I was really excited. We got a sneak peek of it down in the desert for BMP uh, in October. Uh, so we've had these, uh, our Technofiber rep was awesome. And we were very excited. Chris, I know is very excited as it's his current racket of choice, but the TF40s get a update for January uh, 2022. And a little bit different um, change in the lineup. The 305 will now have two string patterns, the 1820 and a highly anticipated 1619 uh, string pattern. When I was talking to our rep, she had said that, you know, she reads the message board, she's on there, and she's seen a lot of requests for that. So she had passed it on and Technofiber listened. Nice. So there will be the two string patterns and then the 315 will still have one string pattern. It'll be the 1619. It's the 1619. Yeah. The 1619. The 1820 will be in Europe. Ah. So there will be a 315, 1820, but it'll be a Europe only. Um, and then we get, the US gets uh, the 1619. So we got to see the uh, cosmetics of it. I 
and we actually shot a first impressions video that should be launching a week or two, probably after this podcast comes out. So I guess, do you want me to start or do you yeah, want Yeah, go for it. What are your guys' first impressions? So TF40 is not typically my racket, my specs or what I'm looking for in a racket. I like a little bit more easy power, but when I got on the court with the TF40s, uh, the 305s, I tested both the 1619 and the 1820, um, easily landed towards the 1619 for me, just a little bit more power, a little bit of power, not a lot, but just enough to get that ball deep. The fun thing I had with the 1820 was, man, I was crushing my slices. I really could. I can see why Chris likes it because <laughs> he's like a slice drop shot yeah, master, yeah. but I could really dial it in on my slices. I was having fun. And that's not normally a strong point for me at all, but the feel of these rackets is awesome. Not something I normally would go to, but I can always appreciate a good racket. And these were really fun to hit with. Nice. Troy, what about you? Have you explored the new TF40s? Yeah. Yeah. So far, so good. Um, I mean, the feel of the rackets is great. I don't think they're going to mess that up too much coming from the first uh, generation. And I think uh, the slight, you know, change in or having the two string pattern options is going to be really nice with the 305. Just uh, that was one thing with like the previous first generations was like really like the racket, but was kind of like working a little hard just to get used to the going back to like an 1820 pattern since I've become more used to a 1619 and it gives you that little bit of easier launch angle, a little easier rotation on the ball. So I think, uh, I think technically, well, the TF40 is kind of entering a, an elite class of rackets. If it's that popular and you're getting, you know, two string patterns like the blade and the pure strike, I think, uh, the TF40 is doing pretty well. So yeah, and I think you guys, I think you guys will like the look of them too. When they, when they get to see them, it's, pretty nice and clean. Tiff, what about you? I love 18 by 20 string patterns. And I, I, I've been testing quite a few. I've hit with it a bit and I've been testing quite a few open string patterns. And to come back to that, it just, I love how direct it is. Uh, it definitely fits my flat hitting style really well. It goes right where I'm, well, if I'm on time, <laughs> it's going right where I want it, but it tells you if you're not too, you know, it's kind of one of those one of those give and takes, but like Britt said, it digs into those slice shots really, really well. I play with a um, 305 gram 18 by 20, but the 18 by 20 on my own, it's a Prince racket is a little bit more open. So I feel like this one is um, just really, it, it lets you be pretty pre precise. So I like that in that when I'm moving the ball around that I, it's going where I want it to go. I have to hit these rackets a bit more. I have like this weird conundrum that happens sometimes with launches where like <laughs> people are like, oh my gosh, this is the best thing ever. And like the more they like, just tell me how amazing it is, the harder it is for me to like want to use it. So of course, Chris came back from the desert and was like, oh my gosh, the new TF40s. Have you hit them? 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 And I'm like, no, but I'm enjoying the prestige right now. <laughs> So I definitely need to spend more time with that racket. And then I also think of like Julie too. And like, what would she think of the update? So we got to do it justice for our, our girl, Julie, who's back in France. Um, but I am excited to keep play testing them. They're not necessarily like, it's kind of like the blade for me. They're not necessarily my rackets, but that doesn't mean they're not going to be awesome. So I'm excited. The feel as you, as everyone has said is great. As always, Technofiber makes good feeling rackets. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We have two more. The next one is the Babolat Pure Strike VS is launching as well as a Babolat Pure Strike 103. Okay. Let's get into this. Yes. So I know on our message board again, our the Babolat rep had maybe a couple month month or two ago had released the specs already for it. So I'm sure some people have already kind of seen a sneak peek of it, um, at least spec wise. And I I'll start. I actually haven't hit with the VS yet. I've hit with the 103. It was kind of right at the same time we it got a, sam a sample of it when I was hitting with the blade 104. And so I was kind of comparing the two and it's, it's very comparable. It's kind of, a, it's a fun racket. It's a little bit more forgiving than the, the standard pure strike, a um, little bit more power, easy to swing. So it's really, I have to hit them side by side again, 
because they are kind of it's a it's a unique racket for its pure strike line like I don't know if I know I can see why they did it but it doesn't really fit with the rest of the pure strikes for me I feel like yeah um Tiff are you on that play test also or no no I haven't hit oh, sorry actually, I don't think <laughs> if I hit the 103 I haven't hit it in a in a while and I know I haven't hit the VS but if for it yeah, I don't know I really like the blade 104 so that really piques my interest and I want to try that pure strike 103 because the blade 104 if it's like that it would be a great racket you will be on the play test. I have that. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> that email yet. <laughs> I'm just saying we have so many rackets that you know we we stagger. So well, I was just looking at my schedule. We're like um averaging like three to four videos a week right now <laughs> on stuff. So, yeah. Um I have not hit the 103, but I have hit the VS a lot. And I feel I know Sage really likes it. Yeah. But I don't think Chris likes it that much, but I I'm liking it. So I'm falling in between the two of them. Troy can speak to this, but it comes with a leather grip. I personally don't love the feel of that Babolat leather grip. I don't know if I should say that, but um, it's a little slippery in my hand. So that was the first thing I noticed. Um, however, the racket's like explosively fast. I have no idea what the specs are. I haven't looked at the weight. I don't know what the swing weight is. I just know that it's been really fun to hit with. I haven't played points yet with it maybe today, actually. But um, so far, so good. I like it. The cosmetics look really cool. The grommets are even cool. Troy, you you speak better. <laughs> no, it's uh, so far, I feel pretty much on par with you. Like, I'm not, uh, I've, I've only just briefly got some hits with it. I've been more focused on the TF40, but um, love the look of it. It's a sweet looking racket. Comes with a leather grip. That's always nice. I've only hit it with an overgrip on top. I didn't actually mm. try and the, the the leather. I was a purist in that. Sense, <laughs> but, um, it does feel really fast. So it does feel explosively fast. Pretty maneuverable. I uh, I really liked older versions of like the pure, the pure strike VS. There was like the previous one that was like four or five years ago. Um, the pure control, which came before that, I was mm-hmm. a really big fan of like the pure control tour. So they did change up the beam. It's a little different, definitely more shiny looking too, but um, yeah. So sort of uh, in between so far, not, not necessarily loving it, loving it, but uh, I think maybe it's just the spec. A couple more things I wanted to say on it. There will be no tour. So it's just going to be a yeah. pure strike BS. There's no tour version. Oh, we will have a global play test of it. So Ooh. our, um, Sister companies in Europe and Australia have theirs as well. So they'll be testing it on the different surfaces and maybe by the time this comes out, but there's no official launch date sometime in January. So stay tuned for it. (laughs) Cool. And last, but certainly not least, I have saved this one, but it is Prince Twist Powers. Uh, The line right now we have the 100 X100 and the X97. It will get two more members of the family, I guess. There's the 105 and the 100 tour. Wow. Freya, you started it off because you you were teasing us at the beginning about a switchable racket. (laughs) Yes. So the X100 tour is my other racket I am looking to switch to with the E-Zone 100 update. It's, I hit with it, man. Now this one's been like two years ago. We got the first kind of initial hit with it. And I loved it. I love the X100. It was just missing a little bit for me. It was a little bit lighter than I needed. And I was just missing something. And this X100 tour filled that gap for me for sure. It is such an easy racket to use. It's powerful. Like I could go on and on how much I love it. It's a little bit more powerful than the E-Zone and a little bit less control. So like kind of balancing which one I'm leaning more towards, like what what I'm, I'm looking for in the racket. I know the the very unique, weakly shaped um, throat might seem gimmicky, but I really like it. Like I, I, I was a little skeptical too when I first started, but I have grown to really like these rackets. The, the one small thing that's holding me back is now I'm being, a, the swing weight's a little bit higher than my, what I look for. I typically like like, high 319 to 322 uh and this one's like 326 ish to 328 i think just a little, it's high 320 so if i could find one that was like a couple points down that might be the game changer and i might just switch but still working on it 
Troy, have you hit these at all? Um, I hit with the 100 tour just a very couple times, but I mean, I, I'm, I'm a big fan and really, I agree with Brit as far as the feel and stuff. Uh, I really like the 97 tour. So if I was going to switch to a twist power, I would go 97 tour for sure, but they're really nice rackets, just really comfortable, plush, easy power, but great control. They're just a, a really nice balance. And I guess that kind of correlates to like a Yonex E-Zone line. It's got similar kind of balance of characteristics. And I just think, like for me, the 97 is just a sick looking racket. I mean, it's like that shiny gloss black paint job like in the hoop. And it's just, it almost looks like a pro stock racket. It's, it's pretty cool. Nice. And Tiff, I know you're on, you're like kind of on the prowl for a new racket or yeah. replacement, but these are maybe a little more powerful than what you like. But how yeah. do you... Uh, yeah, I think you nailed it. Um, I love this racket. Uh, just it is uh, got a lot of positive attributes. I just happen to like a little bit lower powered rackets for because, um, yeah, I need something to help me find the box. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! I, I mean, I, I love the extra power, but um, and I love this racket, and it's really really fun to play with. And I think, like what Britt said, it's it's got more stability. It's got just a little bit more power and more spin. But yeah, for me, I, I am I, I I just like a little bit more control. Hey Tiff, I got a Phantom 93P1820 you can borrow. You know? <laughs> that'll, that'll, it, it, can I gush about it a little more? <laughs> That's the trick. Finding that 100 square inch head size for the generous sweet spot, but then, you know, nice control. Okay, I got you, I got you. Britt, I heard you. Keep going. <laughs> she just wants to keep talking. I, I feel like we're helping her make her decision. This might, I don't often compare rackets to the Pure Drive when it comes to serve because Pure Drive to me is like the top serving racket. This is, if it's not equal to, it's right under, but it is probably one of my favorite rackets to serve with. I don't know why it clicks with me. I so I played a couple different, I did some singles point play, but I played doubles with it. and. I was, who was I playing? I was playing with Chris, I believe. And I can't remember who our opponents were. Grand, Grand made an appearance in there. And I think it was Sage. And I served, what, four games? I think I lost, I swear to God, I swear I only like lost like one or two points on my serve. Most of them didn't come back. I had like three or four aces. It was like unheard wow. of <laughs> serving, like best serving of my life in this doubles. I think we played an eight game pro set. And I serve first and I never serve first and, all knows, <laughs> and I just ran with it. Like I like four serves in a row, like un- unreturned. And I was like, this is awesome. <laughs> wow. I'm going to have to <laughs> now I'm like, Ooh, where can I, well, I'm going to have to go hit that racket. Although I feel like, um, you might be fighting someone for that. Yes. Racket. So then there's another person that I believe did, did they say we, we did shoot the review, the play test review of it already. But Tiff, did they say they were, Switching? Oh, so, oh. I think so. So then, of course, like, what's another thing we share? You know, we're gonna be in the office. I'm like, where are all the twist power rackets? Oh, they're at the Wong's house. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jason, I'm probably stealing a thunder, but <laughs> well, that will be funny. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Jason really loves it too. He obviously hits with the X100. Um, and he customized it with a little bit more weight. So it only makes sense that the heavier version would fit what he's looking for. So, And the thing that tripped me out when I first heard about it was like, I know the 97 tour is like a 310 gram racket or something like that. And so when I thought the tour 100 or the 100 tour, I was like, oh, it's probably like a 310 or a 315, but it's only 300 grams, right? Yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's just that the regular 100 is lighter. It's like a 290 yeah, or so. Okay. Exactly. Mm. So it's not really like above 300. It's your your same spec that you've always played. Yes, it is yeah. right in there. Nice. Wow. And those, we also don't have an official launch date. We're her- hoping for early January or January, early 2022, somewhere in there. But as we said, there's lots of delays, <laughs> both factories. So. <laughs> Yeah, we're struggling uh, with, with, you, with you guys Yeah, along for the ride. We have so much to look forward to, and it sounds like it's going to be a healthy year of new rackets and some cool different things, which is exciting, not just like 
you know, color updates on the rackets. It's, you know, some people like Technofiber are adding new string patterns and stuff like that. So, and Dunlop changing the head sizes. So very exciting. Any last words or anything that you guys are really excited about as the year comes to an end and we start a new one? Well, just hoping, uh, I know Rafa's supposed to make a comeback soon and hopefully we can maybe get a little bit more Rafa and Roger tennis one of these days. Right. Yeah. One of these days. I think we got to wait until Q3 for Roger. <laughs> hey, man. But hey. Who we'll knows? wait for Roger. Yeah, another year of tennis. Just wait for pro tennis to gear back up. When it gets closer, and obviously we're recording this a little bit early, but when it gets closer to Australian Open, I'm sure Troy and anyone can jump in. We'll do like a gear guide for the pro players, talk about what kind of gear switches we may have seen with ATP and WTA, depending on string setups, racket setups, shoe setups, all of the above. So yeah, if you have any questions about any of the new gear, be sure to reach out to us and also keep an eye out for our video reviews. Written reviews are always coming. If they're not there yet, they're coming and we're working on it and wishing everyone health and happiness for 2022. Yay. And lots of tennis. Happy hitting. Yeah. <laughs>